Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the idea of assigned birth sex. And I want to talk about why I think it's a useful concept, and why I think that it is a better term than talking about a person's biological sex. I think biological sex itself is a useful concept, but since I made the last video, uh, I received a little bit of feedback on it, and I also independently was doing a lot of research, because I've been in the process of questioning my own gender identity, and I've been reading and learning about sex and gender. And I've come to change how I think about uh, biological sex. I've realized that it's a lot more complex than I initially thought. One thing that kind of surprised me, I was reading about intersex people, and those are people who you can't cleanly classify them in these traditional categories of male and female, and I'm talking biologically, not just culturally. And I was really surprised to learn that those people make up uh, as much as 1% of the population. That's a lot of people. And these people are mostly being forced into these categories in terms of like legal status, and also culturally. Like, when a baby is born, typically they'll just try to make a classification and force them into one of these categories. So, learning about that was kind of eye-opening. I've also learned some interesting things, though, about like uh, sexually variable characteristics in people. Um, one of the things that I've been reading about lately is uh, hormones and their effects on the body. Like, a lot of the sex characteristics that you see in people, a lot of the like sexual dimorphism, like things that make people look different and even make them act different, those are governed by these hormonal systems. And I was learning about how a lot of transgender people go through hormone replacement therapy to develop characteristics in their body that are more closely associated with the gender or sex that they identify with, uh, rather than the one that they were assigned at birth. And I was talking to one of my transgender friends about this, and she is a transgender woman, she was assigned male at birth, but at one point she was going to an endocrinologist to talk about starting hormone therapy. And I found this really fascinating. She said that she got some tests done to measure her current hormone levels, and the endocrinologist said, hey, your estrogen levels are very high for a male, like for someone who is assigned male at birth. Uh, and I found that really fascinating, and my friend asked, oh, is this unusual? And the endocrinologist said, no, actually this is very common. Uh, many transgender people have a balance of hormones that is actually closer to the sex or gender that they identify with than is typical for the sex that they were assigned at birth. So, for example, uh, transgender women who are assigned male, they tend to have higher estrogen levels, they may have lower testosterone levels, and vice versa, that transgender men often, not always, often have higher testosterone levels, they may have lower estrogen levels, and so on. It's obviously a lot more complex than that, there are a whole bunch of other hormones in the mix. But I started researching this online, and I found, wow, there's actually a lot of evidence that this is the case. And I started thinking about like sexually dimorphic characteristics, and how a lot of them overlap a tremendous amount. Like, there's a really basic one, is height. Uh, people assigned male tend to be taller than people assigned female, but there's lots of overlap. And there are all these other like little dimensions in the body, like if you look at your hands, uh, the relative length of your index finger and your ring finger, that's a sex sexually dimorphic trait, and there's some evidence that it corresponds to or is governed by hormone levels. Uh, I actually measured mine, and I found that I was way beyond the average for uh, men, and I was closer to the average for women, and even sort of a little bit farther away from the direction of men. I found that interesting. Uh, there are other ways, though, in which my body is like, more towards a male example, like one of them is my voice. You may think, oh, your voice doesn't sound very deep, but wait till I sing, I'm like, bah, 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 bah. you know, like, my voice is pretty deep, I think I tend to speak at the high end of my register. And if I look at my body, I can just like, list all these uh, characteristics or traits, and some of them tend more towards the feminine side, and some of them tend more towards the masculine side. It's pretty complex. All of these things I think of as falling under biological sex. 
And the more I learned about biological sex, and the more I thought about it, the more I researched about it, the more I realized that it's a lot more complicated than just male and female. It's like, if you try to force people in these categories, you can, you can make most people fit in those categories. You're always going to have a problem with some people. But those categories are kind of arbitrary. It's like, even within those categories, all of these traits that are variable have like ranges and variation in them. And the whole idea of like male and female is just a social construct. So because of all this, I think that it's not very objective, it's not fully truthful to talk about a person's biological sex as if it were male objectively or female objectively. What I think is more objectively true though is that in our society, people are assigned into these categories of male and female. So, I think it's pretty objective if I say, I was assigned male at birth. It's on my birth certificate, and there are only these two categories, so pretty much everyone in our society is forced into one of these two categories. I think that's more objective, and I think that that's why I prefer using that terminology, which I've only learned about very recently. So I would encourage you, if you are talking about the concept of biological sex, and you want to reference uh, the gender that a person has been assigned to, I would recommend using that concept instead of saying, bi like, your biological sex, or this person's biological sex. You could say, like, oh, your assigned birth gender, or my assigned birth gender. Uh, I hope that I've clarified the distinction between these concepts. I hope I've clarified some of the nuances that exist in biological sex, and why uh, assigned sex is a more objective term. Uh, I'd love to hear from you though. If you have questions, if you have anything to add, uh, please comment. And yeah, uh, I hope to talk about this more in the future. Thank you!